I am James Swanick, the co-founder of Swanick Sleep and the helper of people in reducing and quitting alcohol. And we're speaking to the lovely Chantalyn. Did I pronounce it correctly? Give me, let me have another go. Chantalyn. 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 So elegant. <laughs> so elegant. Chantalyn. Beautiful. <laughs> Uh, so lovely to have you here. Um, Chantelin is a holistic wellness and lifestyle influencer. Uh, she's a very busy mompreneur. Uh, she's the president of the Santa Monica chapter of the Holistic Chamber of Commerce. Yes. And uh, Chantelin believes that how you do anything is how you do everything. And uh, it's so great to have you here on Swanic Live. How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. I was so excited. Thank you so much for having me. Because I'm a big fan of the Swannies. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I can't believe I butchered the uh, pronunciation of your name. I even practiced before we went live, and then I still got it wrong. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> think of Shanti, like in yoga, Shanti, peace. Yeah. Shantalin. Beautiful. I love it. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and just type in right now where you are watching from. And if you have uh, questions, or rather I should say, when you have questions as we go along, we would love uh, to answer them uh, for you. Um, and, uh, yeah, so just go ahead and post a little comment down below. Let us know that you're here on Facebook uh, and or uh, YouTube. So uh, we're talking today about integrating health and wellness into your life, into your business plan. Just tell us a little bit about you and how you see health holistically. Well, I feel, uh, number one, everything works together. So if you are successful in business and you're miserable in your personal life, that's not going to do very well. And if you say, or you are successful financially and your health is declining, that's not going to be great either. So it works together. It's important to have health and wellness in everything that you do so you can enjoy life more and you can be even more productive if that's what you want to do. And so I think more and more so, even back in the days, um, I, I work with corporate corporations and I remember maybe 20, 25 years ago, even like uh, I work with corporate uh, from American Express and they would send their, uh, you know, uh, executives to understand what self-care is all about. And I, I love that because so it's all always about self-love, self-care and health and wellness because it's what you put in your body, what you put on your body, what you put around you. And body, mind, spirit connection, because that's what we are. You know, we can't do just one area and let go of the other. So you want to be successful in business, make sure that also your health is good, your family, your relationships, so that you can enjoy your success. Yeah, I love that. And hello, Cheryl Jones watching on YouTube. Hello from California. Uh, Melania asks, uh, says, or I've heard the term holistic but never knew what it meant. Do you want to just clarify? I know you kind of gave us a nice little introduction there, but why don't you clarify what holistic actually means in terms well, of health? Yeah, I, I like uh, holistic for me personally, also mean whole as in W-H-O-L-E, you know, looking at the whole picture and doing all things that are naturally good for you. Uh, that what, what nature intended is what I think of holistic. Nature intended us to be happy. Nature intended us to be thriving and healthy and well, you know. And for me, when I run my uh, Santa Monica Holistic Chamber of Commerce, I think of holistic also is heart-centered. So for the business folks, you know, we all want to be of service. And so either you, you know, invent a product or you have a service, it's all about being of service. And so it's a heart-centered piece to me that's also part of being holistic. Give us an idea of how you live your life in terms of what do you do first thing in the morning, what do you do throughout the day, what do you do at nighttime as a bedtime ritual, how are you sleeping? Give us an idea of what a holistic life looks like for you. Well, I love having, um, you know, a, a ritual because it's sort of like um, – I used to years ago, knowing things that are good for me. So I would create things that I have to do like regimens that I have to follow and it gets boring and it gets feel restrictive. And I felt kind of, um, you know, just, just obligations versus joy and, and happiness. So I create, uh, you know, I kind of, I'm a, I'm a sponge. So I just learn from all these different doctors and health professionals and gurus. And I develop a morning ritual because I felt that it was a place for me to lean into and to relax into. 
So that's my barometers for everything. So creating ritual for me would be something that's nourishing, that makes me happy or makes my body happy. And especially uh, I have a strong morning spiritual, uh, spiritual practice. I wake up first thing when I'm still kind of groggy, I start my meditation. Like that to me at this stage in the game is a, a non-negotiable. I Ideal for me would be a 20 minute. And I remember I had a teacher before who said to me when I used to say, oh my God, I'm so busy. I'm trying to squeeze it in. I'm trying to, you know, make it happen. It was so much of that um, masculine, you know, energy of like, I got to get it done. It's almost like angst, you know, and I didn't like that. And he's like, you need to chill out and you need to go meditate for an hour. I go, I just told you, I don't have time. He goes, then do it for two hours because you obviously needed it. And I thought he was joking, you know, but then later on I realized, yes, we do need to balance out our busy life with time to self. So my morning ritual will be 20 minutes of meditation. It calms me down. My day may not change, but my perspective changed and I'm more equipped I have a 14 and a half year old son and, you know, sometimes parenting is very difficult and challenging and I yell at him and, and I realize, oh my God, what if I didn't meditate? <laughs> you know, So it becomes like something I need and I love. And then I start with a morning hot liquid drink that I felt I need to fuel my body after a long night's sleep. And I do, I, I give out my recipes all the time. It's super simple, hot cup of water a touch of lemon if you want to taste and a half a Meyer lemon and uh, a, a little touch of cayenne pepper because I like it spicy. And then I put in a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar first thing in the morning. And my body, what that feels to me is warm. That warm feels very soothing. So it soothes me, you know, from my, uh, from just touching my mouth, my lips all the way down, I feel kind of warm and fuzzy. And that's how I want to start my day, warm and fuzzy. And then, you know, because I get grounded by doing all these rituals, then I, you know, start to plan my meal out in the morning. And next thing I do is I make a green smoothie for my son and I, he's a teenager. I fed him really healthy thing his whole life. But then one day he's, he's out there in the world eating pizza, whatever, every day if he could. But I give him this green smoothie and I felt kind of like, you know, I'm giving him something nourishing that line his stomach with. And again, it's about feeling nourished. It's about feeling it. And I make it so yummy. He loves it. He asks me for it. And I feel like, ah, I won. You know, as a parent, that to me is a win. So having these rituals, and it's also feels nourishing to him that I pay attention to him before my day starts. So that's my ideal, like quick morning. And if I had more time, of course, there's stretching, there's yoga, there's tennis games that I like to play. I like to play tennis. My ideal week would be three times a week. I get, I get to play tennis and maybe do yoga five, five days a week. That would be the ideal thing. But you know, all this self-care takes a lot of time <laughs> because I plan about two hours in the morning for myself whenever I could. Of course, there are exceptions to the rule. Like some days I don't get that, but my meditation, I get in and my hot water. Those two things are like my must go to because it makes me feel like I spend some time just to do that. Oh yeah. And I also try to do oil pulling a uh, three times to five times a week. What do you try to do? Sorry. It, uh, it's an Ayurvedic practice. So let's okay. say after um, my meditation, I immediately put a tablespoon of organic coconut oil. This is for the night, for the mornings. I actually have the time and I swish it around my mouth. I put the timer on for 20 minutes while I get my clothes and make my smoothie and do all these things. Um, I believe that it's supposed to pull all the toxins out of your body but for me, what I noticed right away is my dental visits changed. Like I, I get plaque. Some people just do for their teeth. And for me, doing this oil pulling makes my plaque a lot easier for my dentist to deal with. Like I would sit there and he's not scraping the plaque off of me. I'm obsessed about getting my teeth done. I used to go for a cleaning every three months. And he goes, that's too much. You know, you're, 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 you're abusive to the enamel. So I said, okay, he's a six months, please. And I said, okay. So, but I noticed at six months, sometimes he had to scrape the plaque a little bit. I mean, that's just too much information maybe, but I noticed that that was one of the benefits of the oil pulling and it makes your teeth whiter, cleaner, fresher breath. And so I incorporate all these rituals as part of lifestyle so that it's not something I think about, 
And it's kind of nice. I'm just like, get up and I just do these things. And, you know, I feel a million bucks before I, I leave the house. Yeah. Wonderful. I love that morning routine. I got a few points I want to make on that or just questions, but I, I want to make sure that I acknowledge the people who are leaving comments on Facebook and YouTube. So we've got, um, uh, let's see, Mia Bianca says, what do you think about supplement capsules for those who have no time to make a smoothie? Supplements are good. You have to research the companies. Um, and what I love doing is uh, I curate a collection of things that I use. And I have a company that I use to make the green smoothie. It's when I have time, I put all those extra frozen bananas and yummy fruits so to make it palatable for my son. Otherwise, I actually put this powder in a shaker bottle and I'm out the door shaking that bottle and sipping it. Supplements are great. Um, I think, you know, you have to also monitor how your body feels. Now, for someone healthy, I would say it's really hard to tell if a product is working. I usually give it a good six months, you know, when I research a product. And I, I don't always feel the difference, but knowing that I'm doing something nourishing and my body is functioning as it should, that's my barometer. That's why I'm like, okay, I'll continue to do that because we're not getting enough nutrients in our food anymore. Yeah, I don't think that taking a supplement is going to make up for poor diet, yeah. lack of exercise, and poor sleep. Yeah. Um, you can take all the best supplements in the world that promise the world. Uh -huh. but, but I think that they are probably more, I mean, just think of the word supplement, right? It's supplement something else. It's not replacing something. It's like, like it's adding to. So. I think um, if you're going to take supplements, you want to be practicing good health routines um, anyway yeah. as a standing start. Would you agree with that? Completely. I completely agree. With that. I think you try to get it from your food and, you know, um, unprocessed things as much as possible. Uh, supplement just helps you, you know, here and there. It's okay to do that, you know, but I wouldn't just, like you said, it's not a replacement of a uh, complete well-balanced diet or nutrition. Um, we have another question here from Micah Ann Rivera. What is the best eye bag remover for a night shifter? Well, I would say if you have eye, you know, bags under your eye or dark circle, you definitely need to take a look at your nutrition because that's really where it comes from. But there are products like, um, you know, cool cucumbers, aloe vera, that's, and then just ice pack sometime for the uh, gentle area of the eyes. But again, um, I've learned that eye, dark eye circles are usually a nutritional imbalance. Yeah, and when you really break it down, I believe that you can cure almost any physical ailment through good nutrition and lots of water. I mean, I guess lots of water is part of good nutrition, but... Um, my um, partner and I, we go to an organic um, farmer's markets every Sunday morning here in Brisbane. And uh, it's funny because my, my, my mother, I think, still scoffs at us going and paying premium prices for organic food as opposed to getting it from the chain of supermarkets here in Australia at Coles or, or yeah. Woolworths because we're paying a premium price. However, um, uh, whether it's a placebo effect or not, just the idea that I'm putting in vibrationally alive foods that uh, are only have only travelled less than a couple of hours from the place that they were pulled from the ground or taken or, or they fell from the tree, um, and then they're eaten within 72 hours of us purchasing that 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 food and not frozen um, makes me feel healthier and. Um, and I think that's reflected in my overall sense of calm most of the time. I still have, have little uh, meltdowns here and there. But uh, <laughs> I, think if, I think if you can eat nutrition, nutritionally dense, beautiful food, um, then that's, that's obviously going to – here's the thing I always say when it comes to the price because a lot of people object to the price and they say they can't afford it or et cetera. You're going to pay for it eventually. Like you either pay for for – Healthy food now, or you'll you'll pay for it with medical costs later. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Completely agree. Uh, food is medicine. You know, Hippocrates has said, and I totally believe in that. And I I I am so blessed that I live 
two blocks from the farmer's market. It's like world famous for farmer's market, the Santa Monica farmer's market here. Uh, it's where all the chefs in LA come to. And, and I get to learn about the farmers and know about them. I actually have a vast knowledge about soil health. Um, and I believe in regenerative agriculture, which means um, we're going beyond organic. We're talking about doing things that are good for the earth because your soil is a living organism and the more biodiversity in that soil, which means there will be nutrient dense foods for you later. And I totally you I'm not a farmer. Like I'm funny. I'm like a hippie from the city, you know, like I'm not a farming girl. I'm not any of those things, but I will use my dollars to support the farmers who are good stewards of the earth, because you're right. You either pay now or pay later. And the thing about paying later is you feel like crap. Well, who would want to feel like crap? I don't care if I had all the money in the world. I want to feel like a million bucks every time I get up in the morning. I want to bounce out of bed. I want to be vibrant and enjoy all my activities because all that money is not going to help you uh, travel the world if you can't have the help to support your lifestyle. You know, so that's what I want. I want to continue to have fun in life. So yes, I'd rather pay now, a little bit now. That's my insurance. We really don't, we rarely see the doctors other than getting out physical exams. And I like to keep it that way. Yeah. Well, another way just to make it more cost effective is that um, if you're willing to invest in a flower pot or and buy some, some soil, a little bit of maybe fertilizer or organic compost, uh, and actually buy some seedlings and plant some of your own vegetables, um, that actually can work out to be um, very cost e- efficient. We now have... Uh, four or five rows of um, the flower trays, et cetera, where we've planted um, kale, uh, bok choy, mm. spinach, uh, tomatoes. Uh, we have um, yeah. dandelion, d- dandelion, dandelion. Mm-hmm. Uh, dandelion, I, as I understand it, is very good for helping control or reduce cholesterol, uh, which I've been guilty of having high levels of cholesterol. Um, so I eat that and then, um, and we, we kind of want to get it to the point where we, we actually don't need to go out to go grocery shopping for any vegetables, quite frankly. Um, we might go out for some other things, but for vegetables, we'd like to just grow it on our own. And it does require an initial investment because you've got to, you know, you you do have to buy some, some trays or pots or, you know, containers. Then, uh, if you really want to, make sure that the soil is rich as you were talking about there, Chantaline, like with mm-hmm. some worms and, orga- and, and and it's organic and it's rich and all that kind of stuff, then you do have to invest in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but once you've got it up and running, what it really just takes is sunlight, water and patience. Yes. Well, <laughs> I might add some love and love and care in there as well. Love, care, water, sunshine and patience. All of that, we all need it. Even humans love that. <laughs> Us humans would thrive too if we have enough love and sunshine and water and food. Where can our viewers find more about you just as we move, as we move along here? Where is your, uh, your site and where can we learn more about you? Well, you can. Uh, I'm working on my website, but it's uh, shantalin.com. And uh, because I, you know, my career have kept changing a lot over the years because of all my I'm like squirrel. I get excited about things and I go, oh, I want to do that. Oh, I want to do that. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm so ADD on my career choices. But now what I realize that, you know what? I am a curator of all things great. I love anything that's life affirming. So for me, um, you know, I do transformational coaching, helping people, uh, A, to be in acceptance of exactly where they're at and embrace that and, and learn to look for the magic and joy that's already there and not try to be somewhere else. But that doesn't mean that you can't make the plan because we can all improve, we can all expand, and we can all evolve. And that's that's never going to end until we die. You know, like that's just our process. So how can we have fun with it and incorporate it? So um, I now understand that everything I'm interested in is all under the umbrella of, you know, holistic wellness and lifestyle. So my website is going to have all the different things. I, I also... Um, I worked since high school as a uh, celebrity nail stylist. So I'm very much into beauty 
And, you know, you can tell a person's healthy by looking at their skin. If their skin is glowing and you know they're hydrated if you're looking at their skin. Uh, and so I come from that Hollywood. I'm part of the glam squad, you know. So I love, um, I use all that experience to make holistic lifestyle sexy and glamorous because it is sexy and glamorous when you're healthy and vibrant and happy. And so that's under the Chantalyn.com. So if you go on there, I'm going to start, you know, including all the different sectors of things that I care about, you know, whether it's supplements I like, food that I love, you know, um, any kind of products that I'm into and sustainability is a big deal for me. Um, any company that I align myself with, I love that, you know, I, 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 I enjoy caring for the planet and the earth. And I love, um, you know, we have a new wave of, uh, we call it capital, uh, conscious capitalism. So, you know, we have companies who cares about people and planet just the same as the profit. And I love that. And so I, I love to support that just like I support farmers who are doing good things, you know, Mm. we posted a link to that website in the YouTube comments and the Facebook comments down below. So if you'd like to learn more, you can go to chantalyn.com, C-H-A-N-T-A-L-Y-N-N. Uh, someone on Facebook says, thank you. I'm, pr I'm a proud son of farmers, both mother and father. Oh, wonderful. Aww. God bless you. There's not enough farmers in the world right now. I think in this country, we have like 10% of the population that are farmers. I, I mean, that's, that, that's why I, I love my farmers. <laughs> We've got, uh, Antonello is watching from Manila in the Philippines. Big shout out to you, Antonello. Thank you for watching. We've got Vinch Alessia Jamero. Uh, Hello. Hey. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, now you've mentioned, um, you've mentioned uh, water a few times there. I am of the belief, but it's funny because I can have a belief but still not take an, an appropriate action. But I am of the belief that if we just simply drank so much more pure, healthy water, particular spring water, maybe water that's not doesn't have fluoride or chemicals in it, we could also probably reduce the number of our physical ailments and, and sickness and things like that. Um, the more water you drink, the less food you tend to crave, which might mean the less sugary crap that you eat. Uh, the more water you drink, the less stress and anxiety you feel. The more water you drink, the better your skin looks. And so the more confident you feel, the more confident you feel, the healthier you strive to be, the healthier you strive to be, the better you feel and so forth. Um, what are your thoughts? I know we've talked about nutrition and it almost seems just too simple, right, advice. Like, oh, I'm going to come on a show, listen to see how I can fix my health. And the answer is eat good food and drink lots of water. But <laughs> how is good? How important is drinking lots and lots of water? It is so important. Um, I am actually, I've been accused of not drinking enough. Every time I go see my doctor, even my acupuncture, she goes, oh girl, you're all dehydrated. And they have to, and, and my, I, I get thirsty because I'm active and the water, water is life. Water nourishes all of my cells. And for those people who are trying to work on their diets or whatever, I suggest, you know, if you drink warm liquids, it actually helps to calm the cravings and the hunger <laughs> down a lot. And so, like you say, when you drink more water, you eat less. And the water is so good for your lymphatic system to remove all the toxins in your blood. It helps your circulation. It helps to cleanse your blood. So that's how important water is. And, um, and, and I now know that I constantly have to have water near me. I have to have a bottle to remind me to drink because sometimes I forget, you know, I forget. And if you, uh, and I drink a ton of water because I'm, I'm very athletic and I go out and I play tennis and I, I'm drinking and I want to get big jars of water till I can remember to keep drinking and replenish because as I sweat, I'm losing a lot of electrolytes and things like that. And uh, one of the tricks is to add a little salt to my diet. If I want to retain the water, if you're dehydrated, that's a trick. Um, you know, uh, eat food and, and eat more uh, miso based food. So you can get more salt into your diet so that you can retain the water. Because a lot of time 
that's what happened when you dehydrate. You're not able to hold on to it and you're not having enough. So having more salt make you drink more water. Yeah. I use uh, is it Celtic or Celtic. I never, never quite figure out the r- r- pronunciation. Which one is it? I Me mean, neither. I, I call it Celtic because I like the sound of it. <laughs> yeah. We do have a lot of Celtic salts. It's um, People just think salts in general is, is, is okay and good for you, but there's a quality of salt there. Mm-hmm. And if you get Himalayan, pink Himalayan sea oh, salt right. or, or Celtic salt, it has lots of trace minerals in it, um, as I understand it. Yeah. 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 I put the sprinkle that on all of my food and it makes me drink more water, but not out of like a, I'm thirsty. It's more like, oh, I just want to keep feeling good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think with the COVID uh, pandemic right now, I've added a new thing to my ritual. Um, also, I forgot to mention because it, I've only been doing it for four months. But uh, after my oil pulling, oh, and it's very important. If you do oil pulling, you need to spit that oil, the coconut oil in the trash and not in your plumbing because it will clog your plumbing. And then afterwards, I would actually uh, gargle with hot water and Himalayan salt. And I would gargle in my throat and making sure, you know, everything is clear. And then I brush my teeth. And, and you know, it's important. Um, the salt, the quality of salt is actually really important. I don't use, uh, actually, I don't even have regular table salt in my house anymore. I love all the good trace minerals. So I would buy Celtic salt, uh, Himalayan sea salt, um, at the very least, you know, sea salt, you know, is what I cook with. Uh, We have uh, someone watching us live on YouTube right now. Les Elliott says, lemon and honey will hydrate you on a cellular level. Do you know who Les Elliott is? I think that's my sister. (laughs) <laughs> anyway yes lemon lemon and and honey is so good for you i think your sister sounds very smart i she like it super smart actually <laughs> um uh, a viewer on facebook vani sharky says chantelin i read about you when i saw you were the next swanies guest how did you get involved with cancer schmancer so uh, Cancer Schmancer is started by my dear big sister, Fran Drescher. And I met her in 1996 as her manicurist. Uh, her regular manicurist was uh, on maternity leave. And I was working at the Ritz-Carlton here in Marina Del Rey. And one day they called me, they asked me, hey, do you mind coming to Miss Drescher's room and give her a manicure? So I showed up and I, I gave her a manicure. And Ever since then, uh, her, I guess her other manicures never came back. She couldn't get, so I became her next manicurist. And to this day, um, yeah, I still see her and give her manicures, but we became really close and I got to watch her because I was seeing her every week. It sort of feels like every time anything big happened in her life, I was there to witness it, you know? And we watched her two years, eight doctors later to just get the proper diagnosis of uterine cancer. And it was a crushing blow. And But what I love about her and, and inspired by her is that she takes lemons and makes lemonades out of it, you know? And she used her pain into purpose. She just transformed it into purpose and helped so many people. So she started Cancer Schmancer. That's the name of her book when she, you know, um, share about her journey from uh, cancer to health because she's now 20 year well. And I'm so thrilled about that. And so we talked about having a lifestyle where you don't get cancer in the first place. And so I'm very passionate about that because I've always been into holistic lifestyle. And um, then, you know, the other part of that is we help women once they get the diagnosis to take control of their body was the mantra of Cancer Schmancer, where we tell you to please do your research. I know it's a personal choice whether you decide to do chemo or not. If you want to do alternative medicine, it's a personal individual choice, but please do your homework and don't just take your doctor's word for it. Go get second opinion. Go get third opinion. Listen to your body. She had to go to eight doctors. Something was wrong and no one knew. And she kept going. And I don't know, that scared me also um, when I first heard about it, because I'm thinking, you know, here is someone rich and famous. She could go to any doctor she wants. She had all the resources at her fingertips and they couldn't find out what's wrong with her. Imagine it was me, a regular person you know, with my doctors, you know, I I would just listen to what my doctors say. And he'll say, you know, there's nothing wrong with you. I might've just trust that. I don't know. 
but I'm glad that we're telling people like, listen to your body, get, get in touch. If something is wrong, let's get to the bottom of it. You know, if you hear whispers of it, which cancer schmancer does, it, it gives you tips. And when you start hearing whispers of, you know, phantom pains and aches, you know, pay attention, just listen to your body, you know? So I'm mm-hmm. very passionate about it. And of course I love her. She's, She's my girl. She's such a humanitarian. And so, you know, I really look up to her and emulate myself because that's how I want to live. She is such a bright light and a a very enlightened being. And I only hope to be more like that. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for sharing that story. Yeah. Um, Tell us about your sleep routine. What do you do to ensure that you get a great night's sleep? Because talked about nutrition we talked about water one thing that's often overlooked maybe less so these days is the quality of our sleep and its impact on our overall health so what do you do to ensure that you have a great night's sleep i have to say uh, i don't have a i have a ritual obviously but i'm blessed in that i could sleep anytime anywhere like if you say hey shanti i'm going to be with you in a few minutes just you know take a seat i could just sit down in a chair and fall asleep i mean it's god's gift to me i can eat anytime anywhere and i can sleep anytime anywhere but my goal is my ideal i always looking for something that i could um, aspire to do is to have eight hours of uninterrupted sleep so my thing is to um try to eat dinner early so my routine will start like having dinner at 5 30, 6 o'clock as much as I can. And again, I'm not about being a stickler or a militant person. I'm saying that's my goal. That's my ideal. That's my sweet spot. But life happens. So, you know, but it's either 70, 30 or 80, 20 of the time you can do um, your routine. That's what you stick to. You do the best you can. So my idea would be 5 30, 6 o'clock dinner. Then, you know, you have a couple hours to relax, clean up hang out with my son, have a good evening, maybe even watch a show or read a book or, you know, whatever activities you have. And then I would like to turn off all electronics two hours before bedtime so that it doesn't mess around with my biorhythm. Not that I, like I said, I'm not that affected at all. I can lie down and go to sleep. My son, not so much. He's a high functioning teenager. He's very smart and his brain just keep going. So it's actually more important that I stick to the routine for him, because when he lies down, it takes him a little bit, you know, so you can go freshly right off of the computer or TV or whatever, and go to bed and just expect to be out. So we also do meditation at night. And for my son, whenever I'm home, and I'm, you know, I try, <clears throat> I try to be home every evening at bedtime if possible. I do a little meditation and a body scan, uh, kind of Reiki healing for him, just to help him calm. And, it, and also just as I help him, I'm falling asleep. (laughs) And I'm sure a lot of parents uh, who are watching, they know it's like you put your babies asleep and the baby is not sleeping, but you're already falling asleep. That happens all the time since infancy. But with him, you know, I really try to um, give him, you know, that time to chill out, relax and, uh, you know, clean up and get into our PJs. Having rituals, again, not to be militant, but to help us relax because we know what, what's to expect, what is to come. So as soon as we finish dinner, if we can get our showers in, put our PJs on, we're already kind of like get into that mode. It's like Pavlov dog experiment. You know, you have a routine. So as soon as you put the PJ on, you're like, I'm yawning already. You know, So that's what I, I like to do at night is turn off air. And I don't sleep with the phone on. As, as much as I could, I turn off all electronics because it's just not natural for our biorhythm. You know, uh, years ago, we go to sleep when the sun goes down, you know, and we get up when the sun gets up. That's normal. But, you know, we live in modern world, and which I also love, the fact that we can communicate, you in Australia, me in the U.S., you know, it's amazing. It's awesome, the technology, but we have to make sure that we honor our body systems because that's also part of health and wellness and productivity, you know. If you're healthy, you're going to be more productive. Yeah, I've, um, I uh, used to use the alarm in my iPhone to wake me up each morning, and then I changed it to buying a little $7 portable alarm clock, um, battery-operated, and I used that 
um, just to ensure I don't sleep past it. And I put my phone now on airplane mode and leave it in a different room. Um, <laughs> Cause what was happening was that I was, the alarm was going off on my phone. And so when the alarm goes off, what, what, you, you know, you're grabbing the phone. And then of course, cause your hands on the phone, you're tempted to start going into it and then <laughs> you're in reactionary mode almost right away. So mm-hmm. um, since I've shifted that, it's enabled me to be more present uh, in the mornings. I, um, I write down 20 things that I'm grateful for in my um, journal here, my gratitude journal each morning. Uh, and I've got pages and pages of things that I'm grateful for. Uh, wow. I, at the moment I'm doing, a, I'm up to 11 minutes of meditation. I, I've done a, a 10 day silent meditation called Vipassana previously, mm. but I must, I must admit that I have a, I wouldn't say it's a love-hate relationship with meditation, but I have an on-again, off-again relationship with meditation. When I'm doing it, I love it, but then it's very easy, frighteningly easy, in fact, for me to just skip it and to go weeks and often months without doing it until I remind myself to go back and do it again. Um, anyway, just sharing a little bit of my you know, I don't want to say struggle I, with meditation, but it's just my, my challenge maybe. Well, I feel you because I actually, I was like that too. I never could stick to one kind of meditation. So what I would suggest is, you know, make what works for you. What makes you, you have to start feeling into what makes me feel relaxed. What makes me kind of drop the day, whatever that may be. And it could be just simply a breath. You know, um, I, I do these, um, I love breath work. So breathing exercises is one of my favorite things. Uh, We could just, you know, take in a breath, hold it. And while I hold the breath, I relax the body. It's, it's all about uh, relaxing, tapping in. And, and I love, there's a, there's a beautiful monk who talk about meditation. He goes, you know, it's the monkey mind. Don't try to shut the monkey mind. Let mind go and just say, ah, I see you. I hear you. This is what we're doing. And, um, you know, I, I, I also love those Deepak Chopra 21 days meditations. If anybody ever done those, it's so cool because it's very short and he has a fun story to tell you about whatever concept it is. And then you have maybe five minutes of meditation listening to those were also really helpful. And actually I'm in the process of doing a 20, 21 day abundance. That's uh, a, a protocol given to me by the Chopra center in my Facebook group. So I actually have a group right now and it's kind of fun because you, you get the, you're not doing everything by yourself and it's nice to have accountability partners and responsibility partner. And again, for me, everything is not about being militant. It's about how do I ease into it, and make it work. So if I can't do a 20 minute meditation, I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do some breath work. And you know what? Sleep is a kind of meditation, <laughs> you know, whatever that is that lets your body relax and let you not think so much. Uh, <laughs> Ran just texted me. <laughs> Aw, she's watching. Aww. Uh, Thank you, Franny. <laughs> hey, Franny. Nice to meet you virtually. Um, uh, Louis Jean says, uh, uh, is asking, do the Swannies mask come in any other colors? Answer. Yeah. So the question about our Swannies sleep mask, and I, I don't have one with me at the moment, but the answer is yes, we have the colors that come in uh, the color black and blue. So we have a hundred percent pure silk sleep mask that's oversized deliberately that goes over the top and silk uh, actually is very good for your skin because it retains the moisture of your skin as opposed to cotton, which can leave yourself with wrinkles and, and dehydrate you. Um, if you can get uh, silk pillow slips, that's another great thing as opposed to cotton pillow slips because if you if you sleep on your on your side or on your front and your face is in there, over the course of many hours, your skin being rubbed up against cotton is going to leave you with wrinkles and, and, and with dry skin. But if you're doing this, if you're lying the same way on silk, it actually is retaining the skin's moisture. So just a little... A little tip there. That's super um, cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Antonello asks, uh, my mother-in-law's got a problem staying uh, asleep. She typically complains of waking up at about 1 or 2 a.m. and then she just can't get, get it back. Is there any holistic approach to helping her get her sleep back? 
I'm just worried about her health. Hmm. Well, uh, first of all, I don't know how long this has been happening for her, or is that something that just recently happened? Because, you know, a lot of people's sleeps are being disturbed by the whole COVID and, you know, everything that's going on in the world, which is understandable. Uh, you know, again, she, there, there are actually uh, homeopathic remedies that you can take that is natural. You can try it. Um, I think uh, one of my girlfriends who's watching, she, uh, she had taken some stuff that she said actually works for her. I never had to, so I can't speak from experience. I just know that um, if anything happens for me, I go to the homeopathic pharmacy first. <laughs> That's the first place I go. And also, again, all of this things that we're, all these things we're doing in life, the most important thing is self-awareness. You have to ask yourself, you know, how am I feeling? How can I get more relaxed? And even when I do the body scan, you know, I think I'm lying on my bed. I think I'm relaxing, but then I tell myself, okay, relax the top of your head, relax your forehead, relax your skull to pay attention to it. And even to the point where, you know, when it's my heart or my internal organs, I'm telling my internal organs to relax. I put my hand on there. And the same thing, um, what I ask myself all through the day is, you know, what am I feeling and where am I feeling it in my body? And you put love and attention there. So it depends. Uh, is she worried about something? Is something bothering her? Is her diet, what does she eat before she goes to sleep? You know, maybe lately she's been eating something that's keeping her up. It has too much caffeine. She's drinking green tea, you know, which is healthy for you. But you have to understand your body system and everybody's a little different. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I want to just concur with what, <clears throat> excuse me, what you're sharing there. Um, the gold standard of sleep, as I uh, understand it and have researched it, and it um, involves, uh, in my opinion, in my research, uh, exposing yourself to as much natural light as early as you can in the morning and then blocking as much artificial light from <laughs> screens, for example, in the evening, yeah. um, as well as ensuring that you don't eat in the last three hours before you, you want to retire for the night and sleep, um, ensuring that you're not drinking coffee within eight hours of, of bedtime, ensuring you're not drinking alcohol within three hours um, of drinking, of, of, uh, of nighttime, I should say, or bedtime. Yeah. Um, so... Herbal teas and, and all those kind of things are fantastic because they're relaxing, they're very good for you, it prepares you for sleep. However, if you're drinking a herbal tea while staring into a screen watching Netflix <laughs> or scrolling through your phone late, late at night on YouTube videos or lying in bed, then you are compromising your, your ability to be able to sleep the way that nature always intended you um, to sleep. Also, the lights in our in our homes, quite frankly, are filled with artificial blue light, which triggers our pituitary and pineal glands, which stimulates uh, stimulates them, which suppresses our body's ability to create melatonin. Um, our company, Swanic, has just come out with these um, Better Nights light bulb, which uh, have uh, almost no blue light in them. In fact, they're yellow in nature, and when you put them in and you replace them around your home, it's a beautiful, calming light with no art, artificial light. And if you use those in conjunction with obviously wearing a pair of uh, orange blue light blocking glasses, you're, uh, which blocks out the blue light. So if I do this right here, you can mm -hmm. see it's blocking the artificial blue light. Then you, um, you will find that you'll, you'll fall asleep quicker, um, you'll sleep deeper, and you'll wake up feeling uh, a lot more refreshed. So um, – Everything that uh, Chantalin was talking about there is absolutely true. And in addition, first thing in the morning, try to expose yourself to as much natural light as possible because our skin has receptors uh, in it. And when the sunlight hits our skin, it tells our internal body clock, which is named our circadian rhythm, this is wake-up time. So now it's going to flood with the daytime hormones. And then it, it knows that about 12, 14 hours later, it's time to start flooding the body with, um, nighttime hormones such as melatonin. Uh, and again, all of that is a holistic approach, right, Chantaline? None Absolutely. of that involves going to the doctor and get a prescription for Xanax or Ambi Ambien. Um, it's, it's just taking a holistic approach of eating well, getting sunlight, blocking artificial light at night, um, doing some breath work, 
drinking some herbal teas, making sure you're not eating or drinking alcohol in the last few hours before you go to sleep. As you know, I help people quit alcohol. Uh, just don't drink alcohol. <laughs> just stop doing it. But if you are going to do it, don't do it in the last three hours before you go to sleep. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I, I, I'm I not a huge drinker, but I am a big foodie. And I love, um, you know, I love to have a nice glass of wine sometime with my dinners. And I totally agree with you. Um, you know, and especially for me, I, I'm a very much of a lightweight. It's kind of like I can't have too much. It's poison, it's poison in my system. I turn pink. You know, a lot of Asian people turn pink. We don't have the enzyme to break down the, 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 the alcohol. So we're being poison <laughs> blood poisoning until it leaves our system and so it is something that i you know again i'm very conscious about and you know and i try to drink a ton of water to flush anything out of my system but yeah i love to get a good night's sleep and it's important um Chantelin, you've mentioned your, your son a few times i'd love to ask you about him but first uh, you actually came to america as a vietnamese refugee back in 1977 as I understand it, and you were one of the thousands of uh, quote-unquote boat people. Um, and so I wanted to ask you about that and, and maybe you can tell, tell us a little bit about why that experience has, has made you so passionate about everything today. Well, you know, I was uh, nine, almost turning 10. We live about two and a half years under the communist regime uh, in Vietnam after the fall of Saigon in '75. So this was November of 77, and my mom and I escaped out of Vietnam. It, it, it's a harrowing journey. And when I got to Malaysia, when we saw land, our boat, we, our boat kind of broke apart. And half of the people actually did die. You know, not everybody knew how to swim. And my mom and I got separated. So I was struggling, flailing. And I, at one point, I told myself that no one was coming, that this was it. And I was surrendering. And I have to say, my mom was very prophetic. She, before the trip, she said to me, put on a red t-shirt, a long sleeve red t-shirt. So in case we get lost in the crowd, I can spot you. And I think to this day, that was the reason why I was safe because my mom and I got separated and I was for sure dying. I told myself, no one's coming. This Malaysian village fisherman came out and saved me. So I must have just surrendered and floated to the top, bobbing up and down. He saved my life. And from that moment on, for me, this is the promised land. And this is why we're here, so that there is a future for myself and my son. And I used to tell that story and I say, I wasn't supposed to be here. I wasn't meant to be here. And he would correct me. And he'd say, no, don't ever say that. You are totally meant to be here because you're here. And if you're here, that means I get to be here. And I said, okay, you're right. And as, in fact, because of the whole COVID and uh, me pivoting all my uh, work around, I am actually writing a memoir and I'm going to probably call it Little Red Shirt and to talk about my journey uh, coming to America. And that's why, to me, everything in life is icing on the cake. I've, I've been worse. I, I didn't think I was going to have a life. So here I'm saying to myself, here's freedom. What can I do with it? What am I going to do with my life? How can I leave a legacy? How can I be of service? And all the things that I've been through, how can I use that information to help everyone else around me? So that's why I'm passionate about everything. Because I, I can. I can be. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Chantelin. Beautiful. And uh, your son, is, I'm sure, is a reflection of you and your values and the way that you see the world. He's a mini me for sure. <laughs> he is a total mini me um, with better qualities too. He's super smart. And he's a very sweet, sensitive 14 and a half year old boy. He's uh, an empath. So he feels very deeply. And, um, but I also love that he's just your normal, you know, hot blooded American boy. You know, he, uh, he's excited about life too. And all he wants to do is, get his ways and and he gets very creative in getting his ways you know and i love that he's into sports he loves to play basketball he loves to skateboard and we live here in los angeles and now he's told me he's into surfing so i'm going to try to find him a great surfing instructor because 
that to me is like living here near the ocean and be a surfer is like a dream. I'm not a great swimmer. I did learn how to swim after that whole accident uh, or incident back when I was nine. Uh, I actually talked myself into learning how to swim, but I have to tell you, I'm not comfortable in the water like he is. He's a fish, you know, and I love that about him. And he, you know, he's an entrepreneurial mind. He loves to make money. He sees I'm working. He sees, you know, he's always asking me how he could make money. He started out babysitting. And then he said, you know, well, you know, that takes a lot of my time. I want to make more money. <laughs> you know, he's always constantly thinking about how to make money. And I said, you know, what kind of life would you have? And he, you know, he's always um, very present, but is always thinking about how he can do better and, and, and get better in life. And I love that because I just want him to be happy. Um, one of my favorite uh, poets or philosopher is Khalil Gibran, and he talks about how children are not your possessions, you know. So my prayer every day is that I can be a good enough mom to support him on his journey of whoever he needs to be, whoever he's meant to be in this life, and how to be of service. That's the one thing I keep talking to him about, like, how can we be of service? And then, uh, you know, everything else will fall in place. Um, but also the balance of, you know, learning about business. He loves business. And so, you know, it's a great combination. He's my greatest teacher because I want to teach by example. So therefore I behave myself way better than when I wasn't a mom, you know, I'm more conscious I'm more aware. And I have to remember everything is an impact. What impact am I leaving for him? And, uh, you know, I do that again. I'm not perfect, not the perfect mom by any stretch of the imagination, but I do my best and I put my heart into it and, uh, and he deserves it and he deserves a happy mom too. So that's also the other side of, again, balance, you know, um, you, you need to be the best parent you can, but part of that is you also have to be the best human being. And that means you have to be happy too. You got to pursue your own happiness. Can't help anybody from a place of lack. And uh, I did come from that culture where you self-sacrifice and now that I'm here, I'm like, wait, there's a balance. I can sacrifice, but knowing what I'm giving or what I'm offering and make sure that I didn't cut myself short. You've mentioned a couple of times, Chantalyn, um, a body scan and breath work. So I just wanted to bring our viewers um, attention to the fact that you could ask uh, Chantalyn about her guided body scan and about her breath work. Um, we've actually put um Chantelin's instagram uh details there in the comments if you're on youtube watching on youtube you can go to um it's chantelin.la is that right your instagram uh, page I, my instagram is chantelin.la and i'm also and, on facebook <laughs> and i'm also on linkedin those are my three and i i do twitter but it's more of a like i link it to my, my other accounts but i'm very active on facebook instagram and linkedin linkedin it's more professional for me. Facebook feels a little more intimate and casual because I can do all my groups because I do like, like for instance, right now I'm doing this 21 day abundance group, you know, and I can guide people through. And, uh, and then on Instagram is just, you know, another uh, expression of how I live my life. I try to share that. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, I would offer all of your viewers if they're interested, um, you know, I can do a body scan, you know, uh, virtually or over the phone uh, to help you. It's a very relaxing thing. Uh, I would also offer, uh, you know, something like a Ho'oponopono, which is a Hawaiian practice of forgiveness, uh, because I believe forgiveness is not about forgiving the other person so much, but it's also letting go of the anger you're holding or the resentment that you're holding it's not healthy for you because you're the one hurting. Um, so I love those kind of practices too. So people can hit me up. So there are details on how to reach Chantelene in the comments down below, uh, especially if you're watching on the replay. We have a lot of people who watch the replay uh, later on who can't join us live. So there'll be details in the comments down below, whether you are watching this now on Facebook or YouTube. Um, go in there and you can learn more about how to get in contact uh, with Chantelin and maybe do one of her guided body scans, maybe do some breath work with her um, and talk to her more about her holistic approach to life. Uh, Chantelin, thank you so much for giving us your time and your guidance here on uh, Swanick Live. We so appreciate you. And uh, 
thank you for in, inspiring me to go and live a little bit of a healthier life, uh, more holistic, and take more of a holistic approach. Oh, well, thank you so much, James. I'm a big fan. I love your products. I love um, what you're doing to help people because I think sleep is really, really, really important. I feel uh, much younger and prettier when I have eight hours of sleep <laughs> and I'm a different person, <laughs> you know, and I love your products and what you're doing. So thank you. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. And you're welcome.